In this video, we're going to be talking about indexing vectors. Specifically, we're going to talk about single value indexing, which is just accessing one part or one index of an entire vector. So the basic syntax for indexing a vector is as follows. The first thing I want to do is I want to tell MATLAB the name of the variable of the vector that I'm indexing. So let's say I had a vector that was 6, 7, 8. So the first thing I want to say is I want to say the name of the vector, which in this case is vec. Then I give it parentheses. And so inside of this print inside of these parentheses, I tell MATLAB the index that I want to access. So therefore, if I wanted to access the 7, I could say vec parentheses 2. So this is indexing or accessing the second element inside of my vector, which is 7. So in terms of indexing, there's two main concepts, indexing out and indexing in. By indexing out, we mean accessing a part of a vector and creating a duplicate of it and saving that to some other variable. So for example, let's say I had the vector 6, 7, 8. And let's say I wanted to save the second value of my vector inside of the variable a. So by the way that I'm phrasing that statement there, we know that when I have my assignment operator, if I want to save a value or assign the value to the variable a, a is going to be on the right, on the left hand side, I mean, and on the right hand side, we're going to access our value here. So this left or this right hand side evaluates, so MATLAB looks at it and says, I want to access the second value. So therefore, this produces back a 7. And then after that, it assigns the 7 to the variable a. So it's important to note that this line of code does not delete or remove the value of 7 from, vec from the vector. The vector is still 6, 7, 8 at the end of this line of code. All it does is it creates a duplicate of this value and saves it inside of another variable. So the one rule with indexing things out of a vector is that the index that you're trying to access has to exist. So therefore, if I try to say something like, let's say, let's use this color. Let's say I try to say b is equal to vec of 10. So there is no indice 10, in, or there's no index 10 inside of my vector. And so I can't try to get something out of something that doesn't exist. So therefore, this produces back an error. So indexing in is kind of like the opposite of indexing out. So now we want to place something inside of a vector at a certain position. So for instance, let's say I had a vector, still 6, 7, 8. And let's say instead of uh, indexing out the 7, let's say I want to change that 7 to be a 9. So now I want to place a 9 inside of my vector at the second position. So by the way I phrase that, we know that our assignment operator. So I want to place a 9 inside of my vector at the second position. So therefore I'm assigning a 9, so that's going to go on the right hand side, into my vector, so I have vec, at the second position. So I have parentheses 2 there. So once again, MATLAB reads the right-hand side of the assignment operator and assigns it to whatever is on the left-hand side. In this example here, we don't just have a single variable. We're accessing a certain position inside of a variable. So therefore, at the end of this line of code, my vector has been changed. My vector is no longer 6, 7, 8. After this line of code, my vector is now 6, 9, 8. And so unlike indexing out, where the rule was we can't index past um, the length of our vector, in terms of indexing in, we can go past how many numbers there actually are. And what I mean by this is, so let's say I have, let's say I have the vector um, 3, 2, 1. And let's say I want to place a zero 
Oh, not a zero. Let's say I want to place a five at the fifth position. Okay. So in this case here, I would say something like, I want to place a five, so that's the right hand side, inside of my vector at the fifth position. So notice here, this five is the index, this five is the value. So therefore, this is, this is kind of weird, right? Uh, my vector only has three numbers and I'm trying to place something out of bounds. You would think that would err, but it doesn't. What actually happens in MATLAB is when you try to insert things out of bounds or out of position, it pads or it inserts zeros at all the in-between indices until you get to the index that you're trying to change. So we're trying to change my fifth index here. So at the after this line of code is ran, I'll have my vector. It will still be three, two, one. But now in this fourth position here, MATLAB is going to pad that or insert in a zero. And then so now the fourth position is filled. And then so there inside of my fifth position, I can have my number five. Uh, let's put that green. I can have my number five. And so MATLAB, like I said before, pads with zeros. And once again, padding just means filling in all of the intermediate indices with zero. So we can also delete things in vectors using indexing. And so by deleting, I mean to completely remove a value from a vector. So for instance, if I had my vector six, seven, eight, and I wanted to delete, completely remove the seven from the vector, that would be synonymous with assigning an empty vector at that location. And so what I mean is, I can assign empty brackets or an empty vector to my vector at the second location. So what's actually happening here is MATLAB is going into our vector six, placing in an empty bracket at that second location, like so. However, in terms of concatenation, concatenating together values, if you're concatenating together an empty bracket, MATLAB ignores that. And it's kind of just all condensed. So therefore, that is the same exact thing as this. So at the end of this line of code, my vector is changed to the vector 6, 8. So before, the 8 was in the third position. However, now, since we deleted the 7, everything shift over to the left, and so the eight is now in the second position. So when we're indexing vectors, we want to be able to access all the parts of the vector very easily. So let's say I gave you just a random vector, and you don't know what it is, but all you know is that it's saved inside of the variable vec. If you wanted to index the first number, that's easy. You could just index vec at one. If you, wanted, if you wanted to index the fourth number, let's say that there's guaranteed to be at least four numbers, you could access the fourth number just like that. But let's say you want to index the last number, right? So what if you don't know how many numbers there are in your actual vector? So there's two ways of doing this. So we know about the length of a vector. So the length of the vector is the same thing as the number of values inside of it. So if I had a vector and I wanted to index the last number, I can use the length function in order to first figure out how many numbers there are and then use that as an index. So what I mean is, just for example, let's say my vector was actually six, seven, eight, nine, okay, or Let's, let's extend this to six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And so if I wanted to figure out, so if I wanted to figure out first off the number of elements there were in my vector, I could say, let's say A is equal to the length of my vector. So I'm calling the length function on my vector. And so therefore, in this case, A will be the value of five. So now I can use A in order to index my vector. So let's say I can have a variable called last 
is equal to my vector at A. All right. So these two lines of code can be condensed. So these two lines of code can be condensed into just saying my last is equal to my vector at the length of vec. All I did was just substitute those lines of code in order to condense it. However, this is a lot of writing or a lot of typing. And like I've said before, computer scientists are notoriously lazy. So therefore, in terms of indexing, there's a special keyword called end. And so end is equivalent to saying length of vec. So like I said, end is equivalent to saying length of vec. So this line of code could also be written as last is equal to vec at end. So it's important to note that end can only be used in terms of indexing uh, vectors or indexing variables. I can't use end in terms of creating vectors. It wouldn't make sense if I were to say something like, what color haven't I used? Let's use white. It wouldn't make sense to say something like vec is um, one colon end. end. End of what in this case? My colon operator is a stopping number. In this case, end, if I'm using length of vec, my vec hasn't been created yet, so therefore this is nothing, and so I can't use end in order to do that. So once again, end can only be used in terms of indexing vectors. And it's useful because if we don't know the number of values inside of our vector, end is just a replacement for typing out length of vec.